Hello friends, welcome to EPG Pachala. I am Dr. Ajay Solke, presently working as Assistant Professor, University School of Management, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra, Haryana. Upon completion of the lesson, the student should be able to understand the origin and growth of employees organization in India, to understand the structure, finances, memberships, activities and services of such organizations to know the principal aims and objectives of employer organizations related to industrial relations. To learn that the organizations and management of employers organization in India to discuss future challenges facing these organizations. Employers organizations comprising business enterprises are the key actors in industrial relations. Employer organizations, they are primarily concerned with matters relating to a wide range of employment issues, including industrial relations. In India, the All India Organization of Indian Employers and Council of Indian Employers are the umbrella organizations for Indian employers. Chambers of Commerce and Trade, Industry Associations and representative organizations of the public sector are all members of these employer organizations. Employer organizations are formal groups of employers set up to defend, represent or advise affiliated employers and to strengthen their position in society at large with respect to labor matters as distinct from economic matters. Employers organizations are mainly concerned with matters relating to a wide range of employment issues including industrial relations. Here we are talking about employers organization in India. The prominent employers organization are All India Organization of Indian Employers, second one is Employers Federation of India and third is Standing Conference of Public Enterprises. What are the aims and objectives of All India Organization of Indian Employers? The All India Organization of Indian Employees objectives include to take all steps which may be necessary for promoting, supporting or opposing legislative and other measures affecting or likely to affect directly or indirectly industry, trade and commerce in general or particular interest. To take all possible steps for counteracting activities inimical to industry, trade and commerce of the country to promote and protect the interest of the employers engaged in industry, trade and commerce in India. The principal objectives relating to the industrial relation aspects include to encourage the formation of employers organizations and to foster cooperation between employers organizations in India and abroad, to nominate delegates and advisors representing Indian employers at the International Labour Conference, International Chamber of Commerce and other such conferences and committees affecting the interest of trade, commerce and industry, whether as employers or otherwise. To promote and support all well-considered schemes for the general uplift of the labour and to take all steps to establish harmonious relations between capital and labour. To educate the public with regard to the character scope, importance and need of industry, trade and commerce represented by the members. Employers Federation of India The main objective of the Employers Federation of India as embodied in their constitution are very first is to regulate the relations between employers and workers, to promote and protect the legitimate interest of the employers engaged in industries, trade and commerce, to maintain harmonious relations between managements and labor and to initiate and support all properly considered schemes that would increase productivity and at the same time guarantee to labor a fair share of the increased return, to collect and disseminate information affecting employers and to advise the members on their employer-employee relation and other ancillary aspects. Talking about scope that is the standing conference of public enterprises. The objective of scope covers a wider ambit. Scope looks like upon its task as both internal and external to the public sector. Internally, it would endeavor to assist the public sector in such ways 
as would help improve its total performance. Externally, it would help improve its total boundary and the government as would generally help the public sector in its role. What is the legal status of employers organization? Employers organization could be registered in any of the following legal forms. The Trade Union Act 1926, the Indian Companies Act 1956 or the Companies Act 2013 and lastly the Societies Act 1860. Amalgamation of Employers Organization During the pre-independence industry, trade and employer associations, they were divided on the basis of indigenous versus foreign, large versus small and to some extent on regional basis. After independence, the indigenous private industrialists began to train their guns against the public sector, which had witnessed a rapid growth, at least until the 90s when the era of privatization started. The small and the medium sectors, they have formed their own associations. There is also a plethora of sectoral associations. With the proliferation of employees organizations, the need for their unification began to find expression. After several initiatives and meetings, it was in 1956 that a superstructure called the Council of Indian Employers was formed to bring All India Employers Organization and Employee Federation of India, the two national level employers organizations together under one umbrella. Now, Looking into the Council of Indian Employers, the main objective in setting up the Council of Indian Employer was to ensure closer cooperation and coordination between the two bodies, which together represent particularly the interests of large-scale industry in India. In the year 1973, SCOPE joined Council of Indian Employers. The CIE with its headquarters in the office of the AIOE in Delhi consists of equal number of representatives of all the three employer organizations in India. Functions of Council of Indian Employers Primarily to discuss the general problems confronting Indian employers with particular reference to matters coming up before the ILO conferences and various industrial committees and to formulate from time to time the policy and attitude of Indian employers in the matter of collaboration with employers of other countries. Secondly, to furnish and exchange information on problems relating to industrial relations with employers of other countries to maintain close contacts with the international organization of employers with a view to study international trends in the employer-employee relations and to keep the two parties informed of such matters to select the personnel for the Indian employers delegations to the various conferences and committees of the ILO. International Organization of Employers Founded in 1920, the International Organization of Employers with headquarters in Geneva is the only world organization authoritatively representing the interest of employers of the free world in all social and labor matters at the international level. One of the main tasks of IOE is to closely follow the activities of the International Labor Organization where under its consultative status, it strives to preserve the principle of tripartism according to which employers and workers, they are represented at all major ILO meetings on an equal footing with the governments from whom they enjoy complete independence at all times, notably when it comes to voting. The IOE also act as secretariat to the employer groups at almost all its tripartite meetings and ensures continuous liaison with its members worldwide. IOE membership is open to any national central federation of employers upholding the principles of free enterprise, which is independent of any control or interference from governmental authority or any outside body and whose membership is composed exclusively of employers. The Council of Indian Employers is a member of the IOE. Talking about the membership structure and the management of EOs, here we are focusing on six major issues, how a person or an employer can become a member to these organizations, how they are structurized, how their finances are being managed, 
how their representation is being entertained, services and how they cater to the relations of the employer and employee. Regarding membership of in these employer organizations, as happens in most of the countries, in India too, membership in employer organization is totally voluntary. The AIOE has two categories of members, individual, that is an enterprise membership and association, that is a group membership. The EFI additionally has provision for honorary membership whereby individuals with special skill or experience such as legal luminaries or professionals, they are co-opted to serve on various committees of the federation. While the predominantly private sector employer organizations do not bar public sector enterprises from becoming members and rather welcome their entry and indeed have a few also. Scope remains an employer organization exclusively for the public sector enterprises, especially those in the central sphere. Talking about their structure, the AIOE has a unitary type of organization. It has no sub-organization on an industrial or geographical basis, even though there are important clusters of members in Calcutta and Mumbai. There has been no attempt to create local committees or offices. The Employers Federation of India, however, has federal type of organization structure with its activities distributed over a central body and the regional committees. Both AIOE and EFI have a governing body, executive committee and a secretariat. The governing body is the supreme policy making body. The executive committee is responsible for implementing the policies and objectives of the organization. And the secretariat with permanent staff is responsible for carrying out the decisions of the governing body. Scope has two administrative organs, the governing council and the executive board, besides the secretariat with permanent staff. The governing council lays down policy and elects office bearers. The executive board oversees policy implementation. The chief executive of a member enterprise or organization shall automatically be a member of the governing council. Talking about their finances, employer organizations, they are referred to as rich men's poor clubs. Nearly half of the income of Employers Federation of India and one fourth of the income of AIOE are from membership subscriptions. Other incomes include interest on corpus, deposits, conferences, publications. Excessive dependence on income from subscription makes employer organizations financially vulnerable. The surest way for them to raise funds is to upgrade the quality relevance and usefulness of services to their members and other constituents, including the community. Having a word about representation, employers organization in India play two types of roles in representing the interest of their members. First, they nominate representative of employers in voluntary or statutory bodies set up not only to determine wages and conditions of employment of workers in a particular industry sector, but also for consultation and cooperation on social and labor matters in the national and global context. Secondly, they seek to redress the grievances of employers against legislative or other measures by making submissions to the concerned authorities. They also play the significant role of representing the interests of employers in the ILO, various committees, institutions and various bipartite and tripartite fora at the national level and on various issues such as legislation, voluntary codes, social security, bonus, etc. Talking about some of the organizations representing employers at the national level, very first is National Council for Vocational Training, Employers State Insurance Corporation, Employers Provident Fund Committee, Indian Labor Conference, Labor Advisory Council, National Productivity Council, 
National Safety Council, Standing Labor Committee, Vivigiri National Labor Institute. Services. The real worth of an employer organization and the best justification for its support is the range of services that it provides to its members. Within the overall framework of the need to develop enlightened human resource management practices, the kind and range of services that an employer organization could provide should rest mainly on the needs of their members and their priorities as also the resources and competence within the leadership and secretariat of the employer's organization. Some of the basic services that every employer organization may be expected to provide include study and analysis of problems and dissemination of information, advice, advocacy, dispute settlement and guidance or conduct of collective bargaining. In India, this role is quite voluntary and at the initiative and request of the members only. Training and development of the staff and members, safety and health at workplace and working environment and lastly, public image and public relations. Relations. In the course of exercise of their functions, employer organizations interact with the three principal actors, employers who are their members only, government and the unions. Traditionally, employers are individualistic in nature and competitive considerations affect their ability to confederate as a cohesive entity. This attitude influenced their orientation towards relations with the government. Individual office bearers would like to cultivate personalized relations with government functionaries, then institutionalize the interactions. The relations with unions are typically adversarial and interactions are occasional, which are not usually founded on the realization of the importance of continuous dialogue and discussion to develop rapport and mutual trust. Here, employer organizations also interact with political parties, some of the professional organizations and the community at large. Relations with political parties assume significance even if employer organization they choose to remain a political. Future challenges. Now, what are the future challenges that employer organizations are concerned about? The future challenges of employer organizations are determined to an extent by the environment in which they operate. It has changed significantly during the 90s. To the extent the changes can be anticipated, organizations can respond proactively and influence the future directions of change. Otherwise, they will be led by the changes in the environment. Now, the changes in the environment which have an impact on the future of the employer organization, they are categorized into two subheads. One is internal factors, another is external factors. Talking about the external factors, also called as the international environmental factors, the very first thing is the globalization of corporations, knowledge, products, consumers and communication. Growing competition within and across the countries, among us domestic companies and between domestic and transnational companies. Link between international trade and international labor standards and parallel efforts to secure labor market flexibility through relaxation of labor laws and standards for stimulating investment both domestic and foreign, speedy flow of information, capital and innovation throughout the world, rising expectation of all stakeholders, easy access to the best and the least expensive products and services worldwide, rapid pace of change. If the rate of change in our organization society is slower than the rate of change outside the organization society will be led by others. Faster response time as Samajda of the World Economic Forum states, the day of big fish eating small fish are over. It is the last fish which swallows the small fish. And the lastly, growing socio-economic inequity. Internal factors. The internal factors that influence the future of the employer organizations include a paradigm shift from inward-looking import substitution strategies to outward-looking export-oriented industrialization strategies, regulation to deregulation and centralized decision-making to decentralized decision-making on many facets of our economy and enterprises, macro to microeconomic policies for solving the problem of unemployment and inflation, 
public sector at the commanding heights of the economy to private sector as an engine of growth and from e equity versus efficiency to equity and efficiency. Imperatives for change. In the wake of the competitive global economic environment and resource constraints, organizations they need harmonious industrial relations for managing transitions and enhancing productivity. Employers organization they should also develop certain strategies for mutual cooperation and exchange of information on organizations that have developed a more sophisticated labor relations role and created a climate to promote better relations through settlement negotiations etc. Some issues which need attention include labor management relations, IR policies, human resource development, social policies and their impact on productivity related matters, successful case studies, work cultures and changes in internal and external environments. Employers organizations they have to make concerted efforts to develop action plans for their member organizations and prioritize some areas for which strategic planning is required. Employer organizations in India they should focus attention on some of the major societal issues such as employment, human resource development, reduction of inequities, elimination of child labor and labor law reforms. They need to list and prioritize issues and have a proper action plan for select issues. Such priorities may change over a period of time. While prioritizing, EOs may raise and answer the following six questions that can set the agenda for change to meet the emerging challenges. Are there any changes you would like to bring about that are motivated by the knowledge that your members will benefit? Why are you not making these changes? Are there people in your organization quite committed to supporting a political fight for a needed change? Have you made realistic estimates of the cost of such a change? Are there executives in your organization who can comfortably and effectively make your organization's case before the members, office bearers of your organization and other social partners? Does your organization have mechanisms for enlisting the support of your employees, your members and other constituents, both internal and external? Do you and your executives have a clear and precise understanding of what it takes to spearhead change? Do you get honest feedback to understand what your members want you to do? Friends, I hope you have understood the contents well. You can also refer to other quadrants of this module for testing your knowledge and having some more input on theme of the module. Happy learning!